dedicated. Uh, okay. King of Kings. Dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit hey. elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, Woo. dedicated, uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated. Uh. King of Kings is my Elohim, it's the most high, yeah. Blessings is hallelujah. Happy Shabbat. It's a blessing to be amongst the family. Hallelujah. And as I like to say, not just any family, the family that's of the living, the family that's alive. Because we know we got a lot of family, friends that's that's breathing, but they're not alive. Huh? We're around a lot of walking dead. So we blessed to be amongst the, the ones that's alive, that's breathing our breath from the Ruach. Hallelujah. Uh, today's lesson is uh, part three, journey to dedication, subtitle, rejection. Hallelujah. We're going to deal with rejection today um, because rejection in this walk, in this journey, you're going to be rejected. Some, some of us already have been rejected. Ain't gonna continue to be rejected, but if you can't deal with rejection as, as uh, the Messiah how he, how he dealt with it, it can cause you to uh, to freeze up. It can cause you to um, to fall off. It can actually cause you to turn and fight against the Almighty Yah. And uh, we're gonna get into that today. So we we dealing with rejection and uh, see some rejection. It's so important because to, to understand it, because a lot of times we're dealing with stuff. How can I put it? Some of the times we make a decision today based off rejection that happened in our lives years ago. Could have been when we was kids. We're going to uh, get into a couple of uh, stories today in the Bible. And we're going to see because of some rejections in the childhood, how, how some of the decisions turned out in their future. So. We just got to be able to understand when you have been rejected, deal with it, um, forgive, and move on. And sometimes, if we touch it today, we'll see sometimes you're the one that's doing the rejecting. And that could be just as dangerous. But we first must always understand that we first, everybody here, well, Sometimes my wife said don't use that word like everybody, all. So I'll say most. Let's say most. Is that a good one? Most. Let's say most. Most people have rejected the almighty. Huh? Most people at some, some point in time in their life have rejected. So just based off that, if you want him to forgive you, you're going to have to forgive the people that have rejected you and caused pain and hurt in your life because you're not going to make it into the kingdom with that uh, unforgiveness. And a lot of that pain and suffering, unforgiveness, bitterness, it's come, it comes from rejection. And most of the time, it's from, it can be from your parents, from, your, from, from, from even in your school years when you felt like an outcast. You ain't never dealt with it. So when you get older, th th those things are still inside you. That little bit of root, you know, it, it stops you from, uh, how can I, it, 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 it'll stop you. It, it, hallelujah. It's not that you don't have it in you. Not that we don't have the, the wisdom, the knowledge to do certain things. Rejection would stop you from, from, from moving forward, from doing what y'all has called us to do because of the fear of being rejected. He'll tell you to move and you won't move because you probably rejected in a certain area. So now even though you have all the, the tools available to get the work done, you won't do it because of rejection. So we got to deal with it. Journey to dedication, part three, rejection. Let, let me pray in. We're going to get to the lesson. Hallelujah. Abba, Father, we thank you. We love you. Hallelujah. We thank you for protecting us. You, hallelujah for stationing the, the, the angels, for, for protecting our households while we slept, 
Hallelujah. We would sleep. We couldn't protect ourselves. Hallelujah. You were protecting us. Hallelujah. We weren't lucky to make it through the night. We were blessed. Hallelujah. It was your mighty hand that was over our households. Hallelujah. It was over our minds, over our chests, over our bodies, protecting us. Hallelujah. Many people laid down last night who, who did not wake up. Hallelujah. And many people were laid down last night but woke up in a different mind state, woke up with part of their body hurting. Hallelujah. So we, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of your son, Yeshua. Out of the bed with our own strength. Hallelujah. With the strength you have put in our bodies. Hallelujah. To, to, to go uh, bathe ourselves, uh, uh, brush our hair, wash our face, even clean our teeth. You, you give us the strength to do these things. We don't take it uh, for granted. And even if some did wake up with pain in their body, hallelujah for the pain, hallelujah, that you can still feel pain in your body, hallelujah. We, we thank you, hallelujah, that we're able to just, just be able to uh, repent at this hour, to give you the praise, to give you the honor. We, we pray that you open our hearts and our minds to receive a word from you at this hour. Bring us closer to you. We, we thank you for being uh, selfless, for sending your only begotten son, our King, Yahshua, hallelujah. And we thank you, Yahshua, for, for being that perfect example the perfect example, the express image of Yah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you for showing us how to deal with rejecting. Because no one was rejected as much as you were. And you showed us how to deal with it. So we, 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 we're forever grateful. We ask that you would uh, create an atmosphere where we are at this time. In our houses, where we are, create an atmosphere that's fit for the Holy Spirit to, hallelujah, have his way. To bring us to all truth. In, in, in any spirits that's contrary to your spirit, we, 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 those spirits have to flee from our presence right now. We thank you and we love you. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 1.10. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that y'all speak the same thing and that there be no... But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So um, let's go to uh man, we're gonna we're gonna hit, we're gonna go to uh first Samuel. We're gonna deal with Saul first, and then we're gonna move in uh to uh King David. And, and if time permits, y'all will, we definitely gonna uh get to the king. Hallelujah, y'all sure we definitely gonna get to the king. But uh let's go to let's go to first Samuel 8. Because we, we all know that uh, Saul had a lot of issues, but some of those issues we have, David had a lot of issues, some of those issues we have, but we're going to see how it could start in your childhood and go forward. Let's start at, uh, we're going to go to 1 Samuel 8, and I'm just going to read 5 and 7. First Samuel chapter eight, and read five through seven. And he said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king. And now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken. Until the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I may not reign over them. So we see in First Samuel that um the they wanted a king, right? He never wanted that for them. He 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 was the Elohim over them, hmm? but. The reason why I read this scripture is because I want us to understand when you when when you're going to your family members and friends and they're rejecting this word, there's no need to uh get upset. Huh? Because they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting the Almighty. And the same as somebody coming to you with the word. Don't think you're rejecting the person, you're rejecting the Almighty because you're rejecting his word. Whoever standing in place and giving his word and you're rejecting it, it's you're not rejecting that person. Sometimes we get caught up in the flesh and the physical aspect of it and the vessel. Like, who are you to tell me? Now, you got to listen what's coming out of this individual's mouth. And if it's the word of Almighty and if it's truth, 
Uh, and if it's in time, you better take heed to it. Hallelujah. So, so let's go with Samuel because I want to deal with Samuel first. Go to First Samuel nine. It's right there. First Samuel nine because I want to show because sometimes rejection can come because of insecurities. Hmm. It would come because of insecurity. So second, I mean, first Samuel 9. We're going to start at verse 1. Now, now there was a man at Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abel, the son of Zerah, the son of the Koth, uh, probably pronounced that wrong, the son of Abiah, the Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And his son had a and he had a son whose name was Saul, a, a choice young man. And a and a goodly and goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel goodlier person than he, for he for his shoulders and upward he was higher than any of the people. Okay, um. So, in some of the translations, let you know he come uh, that first verse when it says a mighty power. They were a rich family. They was wealthy. So Saul was he come from a family of power, a family of wealth, right? He he was a uh, goodly means of a handsome man, right? And it was no he was more handsome than anybody in Israel. He was taller than than, than uh, head and shoulders above all of Israel. Tall, dark, handsome brother. Little sisters like tall, dark, handsome brother. Tall, dark, handsome brother. Had some had that cash flow, all right. And and I want us to understand. What the book is showing us here, reason why it's pointing out these characteristics, because it's showing us that he had the money, he had the looks, uh, he had the, the family name, all right, but none of that. Not, all right, according to the the statistics, he he had it going on. This should have been all he needed. Right. But 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 the Bible definitely letting us know that hey, he come from a, a, a good family, well, a wealthy family, and it's telling us it's, it's uh, physical attributes that should have been a plus, but it's doing this for a reason. All right. Now, we're not gonna read the whole thing about him, but we're just gonna skip through it. But I'll I'll just say this right here. You know what? Let me read down to 20. Short walk. And the ashes of Kish saw father were lost, and Kish said to Saul his son, Take now one of the servants with thee. And also go seek the asses. So his daddy, they owned donkeys at that time. They used for trading, not trading, but it was like uh, you would put stuff on it. It was like a train, so to speak, or something like a you would. Uh, it was important at that time because you would use donkeys to transport items. All right. So three of them had lo got lost, and he told them to go find them. Right. This let me let me uh, let me see here. Just to say that we're going to jump down to verse. We're going to jump down to verse. 10, Let's jump down to verse 10. OK, so now uh, Saul, Saul is now going to he's going to look for these his father's donkeys. Right. The story is so beautiful. Y'all get time. To read the whole thing. You'll see that all oh, this is set up by the almighty. Huh? You think you're losing something? You think you don't lost something? You, 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 uh, you're gonna run into he gonna run into becoming a king. <laughs> but let's um let's let's get to this point here. Get to the point. Uh, I said verse nine. Verse nine. Before time of Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spoke: Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is not called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, well said, come, let us go so that we went into where the man of God was. And there, I'm sorry. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found a young maiden going out to draw water and said unto her, is the seer here? And they said unto them, he said, he is. Behold, he is before you. Make haste now for, for he came today to the city. For there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as you, as soon as you can be come into the city, you shall straightway find him before he go up unto the high place to eat. 
for the people would not eat until he come, because he, he does bless the sacrifice, and afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now, therefore, get ye up about this time, and ye shall find him. And when they went up into the city, and when they were come unto the city, behold, Samuel came out against them for to go up into the high place. And the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be a captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because their cry is coming to me. That sounds familiar, right? That sounds like that Exodus story, but let's keep reading. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee, this shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me to the high place, for ye shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go, and I will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thy asses, that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found, and whom is all the desire of Israel. It is not of thee and of thy house, of the father houses. And Saul answered and said, I'm a Benjamite. Pay attention to this part right here. I was just going to jump straight to this, but I'm going to be able to get into the spirit and read down. But this is why I came here, okay? So he finally meet, he, he meet uh, 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 Samuel, okay? He meet the Samuel. He get the prophecy that he's going to be all over Israel, okay? Watch his response. And, and Saul answered and said, I am not, am I not a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And my family, the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin, of Benjamin, wherefore then speakest thou so to me? Okay, so his response let us know a lot about the inside of him. In the beginning of the chapter, it lets us know the outside, right? What are the, what is the contrast between what you see on the outside and what you see on the inside? Can anybody speak? Want to make sure we send this together? Yeah, even though he he seems like mighty on the outside, like he mighty in stature, he got the reputation, things like that. He's still humble on the inside. Yes, he's humble on the inside, but he also shows his insecurities. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody else hear something? You said it. Okay. It's showing his insecurities. He's insecure. He understands that. He may not be fit for this position that he that has been uh, uh, that he's been anointed with. He's been uh, uh, anointed with. He ain't anointed yet, but y'all know he's gonna get anointed. He he, but he understands, man. This is this, this is a bit much, and we gonna we gonna see it in a minute by something he's gonna do. But understand, he he has everything you can think of, and now it's time he he's fit to get this particular position to be over all of Israel. And he like, he telling him, basically, I, how am I fit for this? It's the same thing the brother done, um, the man of Bala, when he was hiding down in the uh, the wine press. What was that brother? Um, Gideon. Gideon. Yes, the brother Gideon. Okay, the brother Gideon. Okay, so the, the scripture's trying to show us, okay, on the outside, look little way on the inside, we see his insecurities. We see that, that he's not... Hallelujah. Uh, uh, he, he's not ready for this. OK. And, and this to keep in mind, this brother just started. He went out to go look for some donkeys. And now I run into this brother talking about offer to be over Israel. Let's go to first Samuel 10. Uh, well, it's right there. First Samuel 10. I want to get to the point here. Let's. Uh, I'm going to have to read the whole thing. First Samuel 10, 1 through 22, because I wanted to see the whole picture. All right. This is important. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon the head and kissed him and said, it is not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. Okay. When thou art departed from me today, thou shalt find two men 
what we let me see. You also found two men by Rachel's uh, stature in the border of Benjamin at Zelzah that that thou will say unto thee, the asses which thou wentest to seek are found. And lo, the father hath left the care of the asses and sorrow for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? Then shall I go on forth from thence, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabar, and thou shalt meet thee there, men going up to God, to Bethel, and carrying three kids, and, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of thy hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the, the where is garrison the Philistines? And it shall come to pass when thou art come into the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with psalm tree and a tamarind and a pipe and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. So what's going on here? Yah Yo, and Samuel already understand that, this, uh, that his brother is a little insecure. So now he's, they're giving him some what? Some confirmation. Like when you see these things, this is going to confirm that this is of Yah. Okay? When you, when, he, when you see these three things, he gave him three things to see. To confirm that that, that that y'all was speaking through Samuel, that he had been chosen, okay? Because he understand that he was a little insecure, right? But let me read verse six again. And the spirit of, of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt be turned into another man. All right. And and let it be. When these signs are come unto thee, that thou do as an occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and before I come down unto thee, to offer burnt offerings, and to sacrifice a peace offering seven days, thou shalt tarry till I come unto thee, and show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so, that when he had turned his bite to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart, and all those signs came to pass. So everything was uh, fulfilled. So he was able to get confirmation and he got a new heart. I mean, the new mind. This is important because even with that new mind that he got, this is what this way you, us, have to still kill this flesh. OK, because we know the rest of history of Saul, how he, how he turned out. OK, but he did. Uh, the spirit came upon him, turned him into a new man. He got a new heart. Uh, a new mind. But you still gonna have to fight what's going on, on the inside. Just because you become as, as saved, uh, you, 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 you get walking in the spirit, that don't mean that you don't have to fight your, your, your uh, that flesh. Okay? Because this is what's going to keep most people out. It ain't that most people don't believe or most people, uh, hallelujah, uh, Put it this way most people love themselves more than him that's what it's going to come down to do you love y'all more than yourself because he has given us all the tools to make it into this kingdom so just by this story right here for the part we read is no reason why saul shouldn't have stayed walking according to the spirit but he has some issues within let me finish reading and when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all they knew him before time saw that, behold, the, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this is come unto the son of Kish? It saw also among the prophets, and one of the same place answered and said, but who is their father? Therefore, it came a proverb. It saw also among the prophets. And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high priest. And Saul's uncle said unto him and to his servant, Whither went ye? And he said, To seek the asses. And when we saw that they were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle 
I'm laughing because this story is always good. And Saul's uncle said, tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel said unto him. And Saul said unto his uncle, he told us plainly that the ass were found, but of the matter of the kingdom, uh, where Samuel spake, he told not him. So he didn't tell his uncle everything, right? He didn't tell him. He just told him, look, he told us that the asses, that the donkeys, the asses were going to be straight. Basically, they got found, but he didn't tell him that he's the, that he got anointed king. Okay? Watch this. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to, to Mizpah and said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all the kingdoms and of, of them that oppress you. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversaries, every, adversaries and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by the families, the families of Matar was taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further. If the man should not come thither, and the Lord answered, behold, he have hid himself among the stuff. He, he, started, he hid himself among luggage when you break, when you get into the word. But anyway, he, he started hiding, okay? And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders upward. And Samuel said unto all the people, see ye him whom the Lord has chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. Then Samuel told the people, the man of the kingdom, and wrote it in the book and laid it before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man into his house. So we already see a little thing going on. Was, this brother got anointed. He got confirmation, right? But he, he, he started hiding. When it's time to be, uh, uh, how can I put it? When it was time for him to, to be revealed that he was the king, he went hiding. It showed that he was afraid. So I wanted to see this picture because when you get into his ministry, you get into his kingship, we can't forget the stuff of his past. Even before he, he, he go before the people, he's already has fear of whatever that fear is. Whatever the insecurity is, we see it in him. So now we can get a little bit understanding of when you know, say uh, Saul is a people pleaser. It was a fear of rejection. We're going to see it. We're going to read it because the people scattered. We're going to read it in a minute. But but just understand, he had everything, all the physical attributes, the money. Uh, he had the, the anointed put on him, but that still didn't stop him from being afraid. So you would think you have all that and you're still afraid. All right, let me read down. Uh, I'll just finish this out. And Saul also went home to, to Gibbeth and, and went, I'm sorry, and with him a band of men whose heart God had touched. But the children of Belial said, how shall this man save us? And he despised him and brought him no presence, but held his peace. So just understand, everybody ain't going to be happy for you when you're put in a certain position and it ain't got to be in the church. You can be at your job. It can be wherever. You can't expect everybody to be like, yay, or whatever the situation is. All right. Because if the prophet just said, he's the one that's going to save Israel, but you got the trick that Bilal, they're the children of the devil anyways. When you read that verse 27, they're the children of the devil. So the children of the devil, of course, they ain't going to be pleased. But just take note, just remember that, because we're going to see this in David's life and in Messiah's life as well. But all three of them going to handle it differently. Amen. Let's go to 1 Samuel 15. 
But this is important here. Shit, I'm gonna do what we'll do it later. See, on the outside looking in, you would think, man, this brother is the guy. We're going to read 23 and 20, 24. I said it early, but we're going to read it. For rebellion is the for rebellion is a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and adultery. But but because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Okay? It's, it's going into <sighs> rejecting from being king. And Saul said unto some, I have, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and the words because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Okay? So he, he, he done all this because he feared the people. Okay, we pretty much know this story. He 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 did not do what he's supposed to do because he feared the people. He feared being rejected by the people. When you get into the whole thing, you'll see when when Samuel was coming back down, it was taking a long time, and then they say the people scattered. So he made a decision to try to bring the people. Uh, he did something so the people weren't scattered. They they want to leave him or whatever. So he got out of order. He jumped the gun. He feared. Why would he fear the people? He the king. Why would a king fear the people? What can the people do to the king? You have any one of them killed. Brothers and sisters. I want us to understand when you reject that word, whatever word that the spirit tells you, first of all, this written Bible, that's the first level of the word, the written Bible, right? When you reject the word, he going to reject you. But it just don't stop at the physical Bible, the written word. huh? It don't stop at, at the logos. huh? When you deal with the rhema word, the word that comes from on high to talk directly to you to tell you something. However small you think it may be, we should not reject it because you don't want to take a chance of being rejected. I, I want to say that because it's very important because you don't want to get caught up in both. Bo you got some people get caught up on I'm being led by the spirit, whatever the spirit tells me. But then you read in the Bible, man, that ain't the spirit telling you to do that because it's going against the Bible. That's the devil telling you. They about to reject that, that false word, right? Then you got people who want to just read the Bible and reject what the Spirit is telling them to do right then. Spirit tell you to lay down, relax, don't get out of the bed, chill. You need to do that. If you don't do it, you're in sin. Anything you do that's not by faith is sin. But the point I'm saying is if you reject his word, he will reject you. No and ifs, buts about it. Tell you to shut up, shut up. Let's go to 1 Samuel 16. Flip over. Let's get to it. We're gonna go uh we're gonna go we're gonna get to verse 6. So just to get an understanding about Saul, right? We seen his brother had it going on. He got plenty of confirmation. Okay, we see his insecurities, we see him hiding, right? We see him. Uh, fear for the people, but yeah, he's the king. All right, let's get to David now. Let's get to David. Uh, I'm going to start from verse one. Uh, do we have to start from one? Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm going to read verse one for context. We'll jump down Zion. And the Lord said unto Samuel, how long would thou mourn over Saul, saying, I have rejected him for reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil and go, I send thee 
to Jesse, the the and the, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay. Now we're to get to David. Deal with his rejection. Um, jump down to verse six. And it came to pass when there were come, so Samuel now Samuel there now. And it came to pass when they were come, they looked on Elab, and they said, Surely the Lord is anointed before, before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on the countenance of the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord says not as man says, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Ab Abadad and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither have the Lord chose this. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither have the Lord chose this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are all are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keeps the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we would not sit down until he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for he, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. So Samuel rose up and went to Rama. Okay. Now, David here is already dealing with rejection. We already see his dad's mindset. His dad totally overlooked him. Okay. He's supposed to bring all the children. He brought this his first, he brought his first, he brought his first seven sons who he thought would be the one that get anointed. Didn't even think about David. David out there playing with the sheep. Okay. Didn't even not playing with the sheep, taking care of the sheep, but he did not even consider David. He didn't even consider him. He considered the other ones above him. So I want us just to glean from this. Sometimes, right, in your childhood, in our childhood, even when you be adults, looking for a job or whatever, your schoolwork, whatever the situation is, you could be overlooked, right? And, and you may not even want the, want the position or want to be, uh, how can I put this? Just the fact you knowing that you're not even being considered can put something in your heart, can put a, a spirit of a, a, a rejection, a bitterness in your heart, just knowing that you're not even considered. But we're dealing with his sons here. He didn't even consider David. But let's read down because I want us to see this. Let's read down. Um, go to 1 Samuel 17. We're going to see how his brothers reacted. We're going to see how his brothers reacted here. Um, let me put it up. Let me put it up. Let's see. Get to the point. Go Can I first. mention something real yeah. quick? Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You good? Um, so I noticed in 16 when you were reading uh, verse 1, verse 2, Samuel, when Samuel said, how can I go to if Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. It seems strange to me that he was fearful of the people. But if Samuel, knowing that Samuel was going to anoint another king, he would have no issue killing Samuel, God's prophet, in order mm -hmm. to, to keep that from happening. But you're fearful of the people. So it's just what you were saying, you know, what can the people do to you that you couldn't, you know, you the king. So you should be able to do whatever when it comes to the um, the people. Oh, they so that was a contradiction right there. Right there. Already, man, this stuff, we're going to, it's dealing with the heart. We're going to see it. Uh, go ahead, Coach. I think, uh, Monica, I think I seen you. Mitchell. Mitchell Lee, okay, Mitchell Lee. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, I was, I was just going to say that's how insecurities work, though. 
you overcompensate in one area and then you um, then you don't in other areas. So mm -hmm. because um, he because of his insecurities, he may want to overextend his power as as a king. But then that fear still has a hold of him and he's reacting out of that fear when he does things. Yes. Hard issue. That's why we got, that's why it's the word that got to cleanse all of that stuff out of us. But some people don't even know they're dealing with issues like this. And this will hinder you from getting to where you need to get in, in, in the almighty. Well said. First Samuel 17. Uh, we're going to deal, we're going to start at verse 16. So we see David was already looked over by his dad. Not his deal with his brother. Rejected by his dad. Look how his brother's rejected. Boy. It says, And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. And Jesse said unto David, I'm at 1 Samuel 17, 17 right now. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now from thy brother an ephod of his touch, a ephod of the parch of corn and, and these 10 loaves of, and run to camp to thy brother. Okay. So he basically telling David, look, go take him some food and water. Right. They, they had the war. And carry these 10 cheeses unto the captain of the thousands and look how they, their brethren fare and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elad fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight. And he shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put battle in array. I don't, I'm going to say this, but y'all already know the, the Philistines are enemies of Israel. Just remember that. because We're going to see how this rejection Man, it's, man, it, oh, hold on. Just let me finish. Let me finish. For Israel and the Philistines had put in the battle in array an army against the army. And David left his courage, carnage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion of the Philistines of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and speak according to the same words. And David heard them and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man fled from him and was so afraid. And the men of Israel said, have ye seen this man that has come up surely to defy Israel? Is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with good, with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. They ain't going to have to pay no taxes. And David spake to men, and, and, and David spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done unto this man that killeth this, this Philistine, and taketh away his reproach from Israel? For for who is this, this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, Shall it be done to the man that killeth him? And Eli his elder brother heard when he spake unto the men, and Elab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in, in the wilderness? And, and I know thy pride, and not itself of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. Okay? One of us to see right here how his brother, his big brother, is uh rejecting him, downing him, huh? Coming straight, he, he talking to his heart, trying to hurt him to his heart, okay? Coming at David, uh disrespecting him, right? Trying to make him feel bad, hit him with the low blow at first. There's a little few sheep you got, you know what I mean? Hit you with a little low blow, then he get to the real issue. You know what I mean? He 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 think he know David. But this your brother. David just come on the scene like, man, y'all letting this dude just talk crazy to us? What's up? Who, who gonna step up? Instead of the brother 
you know, being encouraging to him, what he do? We see what he do. He start. Uh, uh, go ahead, uh, Coach Mitchell Lee. I was just going to say, Ilya could have been speaking out of jealousy because at this point, David had already been anointed king. And so he probably felt he was a better candidate. And so, you know, how sibling rivalry is. <laughs> you, you took it right out of my mouth. That, that is what's going on. It's jealousy. See, people can have something in their own little mind, their own little heart. We're going to see it with Saul when we finish this story. Jealousy will cause people to reject you. But you cannot allow that to cause you to stop walking. We're going to see it when we get to the Messiah too. I think, uh, who else got some? It was me. Oh, go, go ahead, Ima. No, I was going to say it's the same thing. It was, a, it, this is the same story um, that happened to Joseph. Um, they were jealous of him he, because he was, they were present when he was anointed king. So they already know what his future holds. And so that's just plain jealousy. Why was not that they were not chosen? You know, they, they chose him over everybody else. And like you said, he already was in the household rejected. He was already the least of the least of, of, of the, of, um, of of the sons when you brought when, of Jesse's sons he wasn't even considered and so now you have the one that wasn't considered coming to a battle and um and he's already been anointed king and you yeah of course the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna try to we always do that we're gonna try to make them look small in everybody else's eyes we're gonna try to you know say what you can say to bring somebody down in order to bring yourself up to make you look good but you weren't doing anything in this manner you were you were standing about just like everybody else beautiful point and that's how i want us to understand when i listen to some of these mores talk down about the sunny church i already know they got internal issues i already know they're insecure They've been rejected. A lot of them probably, let me not say that. Look, when you got to talk down on somebody to make yourself seem wise, I don't care if you bring out a thousand scriptures. The minute you go to downing somebody, belittling somebody, to prove a point, it's something internally wrong with you. You see what I'm saying? This is how a lot of these guys get a whole bunch of followers. It's all about downing somebody else, and then you're preaching the word at the same time. And then you, on top of that, you're saying they're Israel. <laughs> Hypocrites. But that, we're going to get into that. Let me, let me stay let me stay in the tax here. He might just say something that go along with what's going on today. But anyhow, listen. The brothers are jealous. But David was already out there in the sheep. These little few little sheep. He already doing what they will be the dirty work, taking care of the sheep. But now he's getting to the point where he's been anointed because of the heart he got. Right? But they can't see that. They mad. And he finna go fight the, the guy who you scared of. But that jealousy starts speaking through a person. Huh? It starts speaking through the brother to belittle David to hurt him, to cause him to feel this, this pain and hopes that he won't step up. We're going to see how this affected David when he get, when he become, when, when, when he start walking. Because all this stuff is going on. We're going to see how this stayed with him until he got to a certain point. We're going to see how a lot of these decisions that David made is based off the rejection that happened in his early childhood, the pain that he suffered. See, and, and I'm doing, we're doing this lesson because uh, uh, when you have re uh, uh, received the rejection of that pain and that hurt, it, you ain't gonna be able to use that when you get before the Lord and say, uh, 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 because this happened to me, this is why I'm acting like this. Nah, it's gonna be on you to forgive. Because we call this, we say, the journey to dedication. This, this, is, this is our walk to the kingdom. Huh? All of us don't deal with things that have been rejected, had different things happen to us. Huh? Everybody don't been through it. But you can't keep harping on that. Because you have done something against the Most High. And he ain't done nothing to us but been good. Great provider. Huh? A healer. Strong tower. Huh? Protecting us. And we rejected him. So now with somebody, I don't care if it's your mom or your daddy, whatever don't happen. It's wrong, right? Don't, don't, I don't want to be insensitive. But you got to get past this. Because if not, 
most of the decisions you make is going to be based off what's coming out of your heart. Okay? So let's go to 1 Samuel 18. Let's go to 1 Samuel 18, verse 5. So we see David. Y'all, man, y'all get time, of course, read the whole thing, the whole, all that, because it'll give you more insight on how he was, the stuff that he had to deal with. All right. We know the story. David ended up killing Goliath, ended up slewing him. Right. We know that story. But check it out. Verse five, first Samuel 18. And David went out whatsoever saw. I'm at verse five. First Samuel 18, verse five. Ah, man. Verse one. I'm going to get the context. Verse one. Verse one, first Samuel 18, verse one. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him at his own soul. And Saul took to him that day and would let him not go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him at his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it unto David and his garments and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. And David went out whatsoever Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the moor of war, set him over the men of war. OK, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. And it came to pass they came. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, saying and singing and dancing, to meet the king Saul with tambourines and with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his ten thousand, and David his ten ten thousands. And Saul was very wroth, and saying. And saying this, and the saying displeased him, and he said, Thou have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me that have ascribed but a thousand. And what can we have more? What can, and what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Okay. Now, do David got anything to do with this? David ain't got nothing to do with what you got going on in your own mind and your own heart. He, he ain't tell them women to come out saying that. Let's watch it. Can I chime in on something? Yes. Go ahead, Akoti. Um, This is going to go back to what Ema said a while ago, and I'm just seeing it as we're continuing to read through this. But it almost seems as if Saul's um, kingship is the precursor to the Pharisees. So as Ema was saying, um, he was afraid of the people, but he wasn't afraid to come after Yah's prophet. And when we see the Pharisees, the Pharisees were so afraid of the people that even though they had murder in their heart, they wouldn't murder the Messiah during the feast day because of the fear of the people, since the people believed in him. But they themselves were willing to come after Yah's prophet or his his only begotten son and murder him um in order to keep that kingship in order to keep the seat um and i see the same thing with saul so it's like this uh the fear of the people but then the puffed upness of the heart to want to stay in a position of power rather than be humble and submit to the most high and his prophets and his word Keep that in mind, because when we get to the Messiah, that's going to come out. Hallelujah. Let me, let me ask you what I, let me ask you what ahead, bro. And it's beautiful what you just said. And uh, when you break it down even even further, it's a it's a fear of um, it's a fear of losing a power that the world could provide to you. It's a it's a fleshly mindset. Like when you look at the Pharisees and when you look at Saul, they Saul was anointed king by the Most High. So what kingship can you lose, right? But what he didn't want is he didn't want the people, he didn't want all of those people to, to leave him or desert him or, or start to, to look to somebody else for authority. This is something that, that 
Moses, you, you saw the same thing happen to him, but what Moses wasn't, he wasn't turned by the people because he understood, man, it's the, it's the most high who anointed me. So it don't matter what the people do. I'm going to lean on the most high. If I only got to lead five people into the kingdom and to the promised land, then so be it. Right. So if I only got to, uh, uh, when it comes to this ministry, man, if we only preaching this, it's three people on the line. Then so be it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it don't it don't matter because we know we've been put in position by the most high. But when you have this fear of being rejected by the people who you think have power over you or who you think uh uh are building you up, then that's where you're gonna find yourself um you're gonna find yourself lacking. You're gonna find yourself uh uh being disobedient to the most high. That's what we saw with the Pharisees and what we saw with uh with Saul. Hallelujah. Beautiful input. Go ahead, Mitchell. This this is good. Go ahead. Well, I kind of feel like that's the whole point of the lesson. It's like if, if, as you mentioned in the first chapter when we were talking about Saul, Abba gave him three signs that you are the one that I chose. And if only he had allowed those three signs to override his insecurity and what everybody else thought, then he would have been the man after Yah's heart. He would have been, he would have retained his, his, um, his role. David, on the other hand, despite what everybody did, what but what everybody said, he was always seeking after Yah, and he was confident, even even though he was still had his his insecurities, he knew that his ultimate strength came from Yah, and because of that, he was able to sustain. Hallelujah. So, despite what people think, if you if you understand who you are, and you understand what you're walking in, and Abba has told you that I'm behind you, then you shouldn't have to worry about anything. Right. Hallelujah. It's beautiful. I think Elder Mickey, uh, you, El Eubanks, you had something. Uh, yes, I was. Uh, I was just thinking that a lot of times uh, we, as we, as people, we don't we don't recognize that as a fear. What you're talking about now, hmm. because you have people that they want to be always accepted by their peers by those around them and they want everybody to feel good and say good things about them and so they conduct themselves in a way to to uh to get this type of i guess you would say uh reinforcement from those around them that they accept it they they don't want to be they don't want to be thought of in a negative way and so they do everything you know you have people that, and we used to call. We used to call it when I was when I was a kid. They used to say buy in friendship, and you know you have have people that would do that. They would do things, you know, buy stuff for you and all of that. Not so much that because they, you know, they felt that you were their good friend, but just to win your affection or, or win your uh, appreciation of them. And, and I believe that it's not looked at as a fear. It's just looked at as a desire. We are, and, and people need to understand it as a fear because I found out in life that a lot of things that are fear, we don't identify as fear. I remember this doctor when I was in Texas had given me a list. It was, a, I think it was a psychologist, had given me a list of things under the title or heading of fear. And when I went through, started going through those lists of things, I was like, are you kidding me? All of these things are really uh, considered fears. And, I, you know, I, I looked for that paper. I don't know where it is because I wanted to go over that again. And I've searched for that paper over the years and I haven't been able to find it. But anyway, I'm going to just uh, go ahead and be quiet. <laughs> now you're right on it. because, And this is why last week we dealt with fear. Because when you get to that point, look, let me say this too real quick. Let me say this. At the root of this, a part of the root of this is going to see is, is, is idol worship. Worshiping yourself. But you, you just don't know it. Won't, won't all sign up for praise. But but then the, the thing that's tricky about it, Zion, is that a lot of times the rejection or hurt that happened in your past, that you're looking for that validation, but you don't know it. People don't know it because through their whole life they have put on so many different masks, so many different costumes that they did not understand the pain and trauma that they dealt with when they were kids. 
So they're still looking for that particular validation. Huh? It doesn't matter how you look, how much money your parents had or whatever the situation is. They're still looking for that uh, validation. So that rejection, it becomes a fear to you. And that rejection becomes something that will cause you to fight against the Almighty. And we're going to deal with it. But I think, Iman, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of piggyback on something that Mitchell Lee was saying that I actually came up while she, before she even started speaking. It was in my mind. Um, when I went to the conference this weekend, there was something that um, the the one of the speakers had mentioned that really makes, a sen- makes sense even now um, is that you what you did to get here has given you a seat at the table. And so you have to remember, it's not the people that got you there. It's the most high that gave you the seat at the table. And because of that, he's the only one can, that can unseat you from the table. So you, it's what you did that got you got you to the place that you are in the first place for him to even choose you to be able to represent him as his ambassador. Hallelujah. And, and, I, and I'll say this and to add on to that. It's not even, let me say this. It's, it's what he done. We got to keep this from perspective. We didn't do nothing. David, what did David, What did Saul or David do to even be anointed? You see what I'm saying? It ain't got nothing to do with what we've done except for us being obedient to his word. And how we get taken from that is from being disobedient. See, he, it, it, any one of these prophets, any one of these men or women of y'all in this Bible, any one of them, they all was chosen because he, because of love, because he loved them. And because he wanted him to glorify him. It had nothing to do at all with how smart, how wise he was, how intelligent, how beautiful, how cute, whatever the situation was, right? And this is what he's trying to, uh, Abba Yah is trying to uh, get us to see. It's all because of him. It's what he's doing and did in our life and is going to do in our life that's, that's going to, that he wants to glory. So he will use individuals to show himself through. But the trick that the enemy uses is to get us to even come in and get a little piece of that glory. And once that happens, it's over. So I was going to desire a little piece of that or, or have a, because uh, uh, now you're going to think that, by to your point, you're going to think what happened is you think uh, 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 that I got myself here, so now I got to do something to keep myself here. You understand what I'm saying? No. It, 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 go, go ahead. I think somebody. No. Said what I'm saying is that it was because of their heart. He he looked at the stack. He he didn't look at what they looked like on the outside when it came to David. It was because of his heart, and he's and he was a man after Yah's own heart, as the word does say. So it was. It was something that he, it, yeah, everything is because of the most high and what he does. But, you know, humility is it, it's something you don't want him to humble you. You want to humble yourself, right? So it's his heart. It was the heart that, that the most high looked at that made him choose David. So that's what I'm saying. It's what we did. It's what we do. Our continued obedience, like you said, it's all the things that we do that keeps us in this place um, because we love the most high and because he loved us first, as you already said. But I'm just saying, it, it's what got us there. You know, it's not always, you know, it's not people that does it. It's the most high that does it, but he does it through our willingness and humbleness of the heart. Right. Correct. And look, this is what I'm saying. Ima. You're saying what you're saying is correct, but I want, I want us to understand this. Remember last week we talked about, he has to even put that heart in us. That's what I want to make clear. The heart that he gave, David didn't have that heart. He has to, what this, uh, 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 Deuteronomy uh, 29 5, he says, Oh, they have a heart to fear me. He has to put that heart in us, even to uh, uh, be humble. A lot of times, people, reason why people are not humble, the reason why people are not searching him, that thirst him, it ain't because, it, it because he hasn't given them that heart. This is why grace and mercy and praise and worship is so, if we understand, because look, he has put everything in us to seek after him. You see what I'm saying? He he put everything in us to seek after him. Anything you can think of, he put it in us to desire him. Nobody, nobody's born to let me not I won't go that deep. Let me, let me say this. <laughs> let me say this. Listen, and the reason why we got it, we have to be on this part right here. Because we're gonna see later on. 
we're going to see in a minute dealing with David, right? We're going to see in a minute dealing with David what happened to him. If we don't keep it a forefront of our mind, that it's because of him that even put the heart and the desire to seek after him in us, it's going to be easy for Hashatan to come in and get us to do the go against Yah. We're going to see it with David in a minute. Uh, go ahead, somebody, uh, Coach Mitchell Lee. Yeah, so funny. Um, I actually kind of studied this topic out uh, earlier this week as I'm looking at my lessons for purity. Um, James 1, 21 says, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save your soul. It's like he plants the word in you. He plants mm -hmm. everything in our heart. It's to us to believe it and accept it. Yes. Go ahead, Uncle Willie. Or Dean. Thought he lit up. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, 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 once he put that in us, now we become workmen with him. He's he, now you, you have to, man. Oh, let, me, let me, we ain't gonna do all the talking. Let, let's just get to it. First, first Samuel 18. Let's go back to first Samuel 18. Let's go back to first Samuel 18. Ooh, we. <laughs> Watch David, man. David, David for the do everything we just talked about. We for the see it with David. <clears throat> we seen it with Saul a little bit, how he got turned into another man. But then, then what happened? Then he went right. Then he went right back off. D David got turned to another. I mean, Saul got a new man, turned to another heart, right? Did a little work, but then he went off. What we're gonna watch the King David though. <coughs> Boy, hallelujah! Oh, praise to the King. First Samuel 18, verse. Where well, I start off at? Uh, I'm gonna read verse 14 again. And David said, But behave himself wisely in all the ways, and the Lord with him. I need. Give it a pen. Wherefore Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, and he was afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter Mirabah, will her will I give thee to wife? Only be thou, how you pronounce the word, valiant, valiant. For me and fight the Lord's battle. For Saul said, let, let not my hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And David said unto Saul, Who am I? And what, what is my life or, or my father's family in Israel that I should be son-in-law to the king? But it came to pass at the time when Mirabah Saul's daughter should have been given to David, that she was given unto Erda. Uh, the Mennonite, the wife. Okay, so so now we see. Remember, David said he dealt wisely with this brother. It, it, it says he dealt wisely with him, right? David already understands something we're gonna see in a minute. But I, I want us to understand this. Even in your moments of of uh, triumph, in your moment of victory, in your moment of overcoming, you're gonna see people. The king or whoever, people are giving Dave, uh, giving him honor, which is due, right? But even in him overcoming the enemy, we see Saul hating on him. We see Saul despising him. So I wanted to take a mental note. Just because we overcome things and you get put in a position and, and, and y'all taking you up, you're gonna have some people that's despising you, huh? So don't don't expect everybody to to to, to be on the uh uh uh. We, we praise y'all for the accomplishment that you, we see you overcome. Even if it says I don't see people being on drugs and get delivered, and then the, the brother and sister trying, and you got people still talking. Oh, they they still drink though. Or or, or he still ain't got no job. Man, this man just stopped do, doing drugs for forty years. Or this sister been out there. Uh, uh, Prostituting herself on the street, coming to church, still get delivered, still trying. Then you got still people still poking, still looking at little stuff instead of uh, 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 giving y'all the praise for what the person overcame. 
because of the pain they got in their own heart. So I just want to admonish us to, to have a mindset that even on your on your way to coming to what God has placed you at, right? Everybody ain't going to be praising y'all for your, for your victory. You're going to have some people, huh? That's going to be coming against you or, or in their heart despising you because they see what y'all is doing with you. Okay? Let's keep it in mind. Let's go to 1 Samuel 26. We should really get into it now. 1 Samuel 26. Because you would think Saul, he was scared to go out there and fight. He the king. He should have been the first partaker anyways. He, he should have been out there going to put that lay down on that wood. But, this, but David stood up to go handle it. And now you, 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 you're mad. But again, this goes back to Saul hiding. You know what I'm saying? He understand how he was. He was hiding when it was time for him to become king. He, he, he had insecurities with himself. So now this is still plaguing him when you deal with David. Because of what he got going on, he don't want to congratulate. You want some people, man, you, you'll be, you should be congratulated or whatever. Uh, they ain't for to congratulate you because they mad. Hmm? They're going to reject you, but you can't allow that to cause you to get bitter and angry. But we're gonna get to we're gonna get to the point. We're gonna deal with David now. Uh let's go to Psalms 126. I want us to see this. Wait, where are we going? I'm gonna I said Psalm. First Samuel 26. First Samuel chapter 26. And I'm gonna start it at verse. Let's see here, because this this is gonna get real interesting right here. Um First uh, Samuel twenty six. Let's start at verse seventeen. When y'all get time and your time, whenever y'all put on your heart, read the the chapters from between chapters because it'll pull more stuff into it. But I just want to get to the point here. Um, we need to see something happen with David right now because of rejection. Un, un, unchecked trauma. Okay. Um, so so check it out. Um, I'm going to start at verse 17. It says, And Saul knew David's voice and said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doeth my lord through pursuit after his servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in thy hand? OK, this when Saul, they, they encounter each other now because Saul had been trying to kill him. Right. David don't came to him to try to talk to him. He said, now I pray thee, my Lord, the king, hear the words of of his servant. If the Lord have stirred up thee against me, let him accept my offering. But if by but if thou be thy children of men, curse be they before the Lord. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, go serve other gods. OK, basically, David tell him, look, if it's something it David basically tell him, look, if it's something that I have done, you know, what I'm saying that, that you got in your own mind, speak on it. If it's something that somebody don't came to you and told you speak on it. Right. But watch this. Now, therefore, <laughs> now, therefore. Let not my blood fall on the earth before the face of the Lord, for the king Israel is come out to seek a flea as one does hunt a, a pledge in the mountains. Then said Saul, watch what Saul say. Saul said, I have sinned. Right? So David tell him, like, you, basically, you hunt me down for nothing. I ain't done nothing wrong to you. Check, check and see. He, early, he's like, check and see. If, if I've done something to you, look in your own mind, in your own heart to see if I've done something. Or if anybody else came and told you, that I done something, let me know. But Saul gets some understanding now. Saul say, then said Saul, I have sinned. Watch me tell David, return my son, David, for I will no more do harm. Uh, I will no more do thee harm because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool. I have erred exceedingly. Okay. And David answered and said, behold, the king's spear and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness for the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. But I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. And behold, 
as thy life was much set by thee this day in my eyes, so let my life be set by in the eyes of the Lord, and let him deliver me out of all tribulations. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things and also shall still prevail. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. So right here, basically Saul agreeing that, hey, David, you got it. You're going to do more mighty things than me. OK, forgive me. I was off. No, I erred and I sinned. But the issue is when you go back to Samuel, uh, I think it's 24. You go back to Samuel 24, you will see Saul is doing the same thing after they had an account of Saul. Like, look, I'm sorry. He repented. And that time, I think he actually cried. Right. But then he went back and tried to kill David. Right. <laughs> That's in Psalm. Should we go read that? <clears throat> We might read it time from then. <clears throat> but in Psalms 20, I mean, not Psalms, he's in Psalms. And first, let me calm down. In 1 Samuel 24, you'll see that uh, they had their encounter and Saul got all the emotional. He repented and all this type of thing, saying he's sorry. But then he still tried to kill David. But now this is a whole nother time, right? He coming up. He's saying, I've sinned. I'm wrong again. You know, forgive me. I erred. <clears throat> this one is story will be interesting because look, a person I want to say this the right way, Zion. Because you don't want to uh, okay, so the problem that David is having right now is that he don't feel he can really trust Saul, right? But you still have to remember last week we read when, when fear came in, what did Jehoshaphat do? Jehoshaphat went and sought the Lord, right? He went and sought the Lord on what to do and how to handle the situation, right? So David here, when Saul is doing this, when he's when he's basically repenting, uh, saying he's sin, David should have sought the Lord. We're going to see David didn't sought the Lord. Because of what has happened in previous times, we're going to see David now do something that's... Uh, he gonna go against uh, the Almighty, okay? But in this story right here, this guy Saul just said, "Look, I'm sorry. You know, what I'm saying, forgive me. You you're gonna prevail. You're gonna be the king. You're gonna do mighty things, basically, right? But because of David, the fear that David have in him, he's moved by fear. Watch what he do. Let's look at the next chapter. Go over to um, chapter 27. See, David at this time he didn't go. Seek the Almighty, right? He's going off a pass. Hmm? He's living off a past rejection from Saul. Probably can go all the way back to his childhood. <clears throat> but watch this. We have First Samuel, First uh, Samuel chapter twenty-seven. And David said in his heart, "I shall not perish one day by the hand of Saul." Okay. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape in the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in the coast of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose and he passed over with 600 men that were with him in Achish, the son of Morka, the, the king of God. Okay? Now, I, I want us to understand something. Remember, uh, first of all, are the Philistines, are they our enemies or are they um, our allies? Enemies are allies. They're enemies, right? They're enemies. So, let me finish reading down. They're enemies. Remember that. So, he he got in his own heart and said, look, basically, I ain't going to let this dude kill me. Man, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go to the Philistines, right? But watch what he do. And this is what rejection, this is what fear would cause you to do, and you won't even know you're doing it. But let's, let's, let's get to the story. Um, whew. Verse 3. And David dwelt with Achish and God. And God, remember, this is where Goliath come from. He, he's dealing with these Philistines, man. And his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, uh, Anar, 
the Jez, the Jez, the Jez, I don't know how to pronounce that word. The Jez, ah, Lord have mercy. Who could pronounce that? The verse three, the Jezreelites. 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 Thank you, thank you, Ema. And Abigail, the 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 Camerites, Nabal's wife. And it was told Saul that David was fled to God, and he sought him no more for him. Yeah, you know, Saul was already scared of the Philistines anyway. But so, and David said to Achish, if I now have found grace in thy eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in, in a rural city with thee? Then Achish gave King Ziklag that day, wherefore Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. And this time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. And David and his men went up to invade, to invade the Gerishites, the Gerites, the Ammonites, and those nations were of old inhabitants of the land, and they go as to serve even unto the land of Egypt. And David smote the land and left neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep and ox and the asses and the camels and the apparel and the return and returned to Achish, right? And Achish said, where the have ye made a road today? And David said against the south of Judah and against the south of the Jimrelites and against the south of the Kenites. And David say, and David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to God, saying, lest they should tell on us, saying, so, so did David, and so would be his manner, all the while he dwelt in the country of the Philistines. Okay? And Achish believed David, saying he hath made his people Israel utterly to abhor him, therefore he shall be made my servant forever. Okay? Now, what, what is going on here? And we're going to see it more clearly in the next chapter. David has made allies with the Philistine, right? But he's lying, right? Saying that he's going to kill Israel, that he's killing Israel, right? So this guy can now trust him. So David is actually, first of all, he made friends with the enemy. Then he's going, he's lying, saying that he's killing uh, Judah, right? And some of their allies, but really he's killing uh, uh, the enemies of Israel, right? But he, he, he's been deceitful. He's trying to have best, best of both worlds, put it that way, okay? He, he don't want to go kill Israel. Man, this is going to catch up. We're going to see it. He don't want to go kill Israel, but he understands he has to act like he's a traitor to Israel by, by pretending that he's killing Israel to the, to the Philistines, right? So they'll let him stay there. So some may say, can we read Exodus 23? You, you'll see that, oh, these people that he was killing were actually enemies to Israel, right? That should have been wiped out anyway. So some may say, well, he was doing the work, you know what I mean? But what was his heart at anyways? He's doing it for his own gain, okay? He ain't doing it because Yah is telling him to go do it. He's doing it so he can act like he's a friend to the Philistines so now he can get some type of safe haven from Saul, okay? I want us to see this. This, this is what that story is about. He teamed up, him and his man teamed up with the... Uh, with the Philistines, and he's pretending like he's fighting against Israel, but it's going to come for a circle. Go ahead, Akoti Mitchell Lee. Um, David definitely had a choice in doing that, but I just wanted to point out um, how when we act out of our insecurities, how we can force other people to do things that, that are deceitful and dishonest, because th think about it, this, when Saul, when Saul was told to anoint I'm sorry. When Samuel was told to anoint Saul, one of the things that he said was so that Yeshua, uh, Yah said to him was that so that he can save my people from the Philistines. And yet, because of his jealousy and his ridiculousness um, against David, he's now sent a son of Yah towards the enemy because of mm -hmm. of, of his his um, jealousy. And again, you know, David has a choice. Obviously, we all have a choice, but yeah. still, you know, our behavior cause reaction in other people so we need to be mindful of that beautiful that's, i think uh, uh maury troy is putting a become a stumbling block Th this is why this is so important it's not just about us the decisions you make make no mistake about it it will affect your kids your grandkids and then you can get holy and righteous you want 
But the, you see them going through some of this stuff because of the decisions you don't make. Make no mistake about it. That's why we got to stay in a repentant mind state, ask y'all for forgiveness, and have mercy on our kids and our grandkids, because some of the decisions we don't make uh, uh, based out of fear and rejection is causing them to stumble. And then we want to look at them all crazy, like, why are you doing that? Why are you acting like that? Man, because you put this, you caused me to stumble. <clears throat> but it ain't no excuse. It is no excuse. Nobody going to be able to look at nobody and, it's, and uh, make no excuse. You, you, we all gonna have to submit ourselves to the Almighty God and ask y'all sure to clean us up. Okay, so let's go to uh, the next chapter. <clears throat> Cause see, <clears throat> your lie, your lie is only gonna last for so long. Being deceitful only gonna last for so long. You don't, you only gonna be able to hide for so long when He got His hands on you. Let's go to uh, twenty nine. Go to twenty nine. First Samuel twenty nine. Uh, I read 28. Yeah, I read 28. That's all we wanted. Uh, 27. Let's go to 28. Let me take, go to 28. Go to 1 Samuel 28. I'm just going to read 1 and 2. <laughs> and Dave, and it came to pass. I'm at 1 Samuel chapter 28, 1 and 2. And David came to pass in those, in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. Okay, and a kid said unto David, Know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle with uh, to battle. Know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle thou and thy men. And David said to Akish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Akish said to David, Therefore will I make the, the keeper of my head forever. Okay, now. Now it's time. Now you you don't told this man you've been killing the Israelites. You've been killing all the Israelites. David don't told him that. You don't brought all the cattle back to the people, whatever. Now they fit to go to war against Israel for real. Now the king saying, "Look, you with me, David? Are you with me, David?" David like, "Yeah, you know I got you." Let's go to the next chapter. We're gonna flip over to twenty nine, chapter twenty nine. Okay. And I'll and I'll and I'll say this to David to a point when you read the, when you read the whole thing, he actually, man, but still he off on this. Because again, he moved in fear. But when he would go uh, uh to those other nations and destroy those people, one thing he's doing, he's destroying Israel enemies, and then he actually would give some of the spoils to some of the people in Israel, all right? But they got nothing to do with what's in his heart and why he's doing it. Okay. Let's let's get to it. Uh first Samuel 29. <clears throat> now the Philistines gathered together all thy enemies to Apec and to Israelite pitch and to Israel and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is Jezreel and the Lord of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and thousands but David and his men passed on in the reward with Akish then said the prince of the Philistines what do these Hebrews what do these Hebrews here and a kid said unto the prince of the Philistines, Is not this David the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which have been with me these days of these years? And I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me this day. And the prince of the Philistines were wroth with him. And the princes and the, and the princes of the Philistines said unto him, Make this fellow return that he may go again to his place which thou have appointed him. And let him not go with us to battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. For wherewith should he reconcile himself to his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? <clears throat> so this guy like, look, we don't want this guy going to war with us. He might get in the war and, you know, uh, start fighting us, which that's wisdom, right? But David now has found out, right? Let me finish reading. <clears throat> Is not this David of whom they sang until one another in dances, singing, Saul slew his thousands, and David is ten thousands? I like how the Bible lets us know, look, man, this thing, his fame went all over, okay? His fame went all over. And then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely, as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, 
and thy going out and thy coming in with me, and the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in this since the day of the coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord's favor thee not. Wherefore now return and go in peace that that thou displeased that thou displeased not the Lord of the Philistines. And David said unto Achish, But what have I done? And what has found and what has thou found in thy servant? So as long as he has been with thee unto this day, that I may not go fight against the enemies of my Lord's king. Who is he calling the enemies at this point? Who is David talking about? Huh? David is talking about Israel. Israel. Okay. I, I want us to understand that this is the king of Israel. But because of the situation he had going on with Saul, the rejection of fear, he finds himself in a situation now where he's now entangled with the enemies going to destroy the people. But we're going to see, thank the almighty Yah, he always will give us an escape. Because sometimes, because we will listen to people, hopefully nobody doing it now. When you start living in bitterness and rejection and hate and pain and and, and you, you go to the enemy, you go to these little crazy, well, hopefully you got a little crazy friends no more. You go to the gossiping friends in the world or family members, they get in your mind and tame you. Now you find yourself yoked up with the enemy. Huh? Doing and saying stuff against the almighty. And, and it happened just like that. Huh? You, you can go try to seek refuge because that's what a lot of people do. They're going to try to seek refuge with, 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 with some person that's not even in the word. Then you find yourself yoked up with the enemy. Then before you know it, you fighting against the almighty or, or, or now you fit to go fight against the almighty and don't know it. You, you, you're a total sin. Hmm? In your position. Boy, you ever been in that situation where people looked at you as, as being holy and righteous? They know you're a holy man or a holy woman, and then you over there in the backyard or you at the party. I don't been in that situation. You're doing something you shouldn't be doing. And you're like, boy, what you doing here? Ain't you going to church tomorrow? Don't you keep the Sabbath? You over there doing the devil's work with them. You supposed to be destroying the devil. See, we, we got to keep the faith. huh? We got to die to this flesh so we don't get found. We don't find ourselves in sticky situations. And it can happen just like that. At least I know my, some of my homeboys used to call me out. Hmm? When I first started walking this thing and I was uh, uh, tip, what is, I was on that fence like a, uh, I was tiptoeing that gate like, like, like somebody on the cross wire. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's what one of my brothers, one of my brothers, uh, Sarah, one of my best friends, hey, I'm in that walk, start walking, you know what I mean, trying to do the right thing, they see the life changing, but boy, every time they have a party, I'm over there. Then I stop coming, because they'll stop saying, hey, uh, man, what, what you doing in here, because it's crazy parties, where they have their parties, be crazy, right? Shouldn't be in there, no holy righteous man should be in a scene like that. So then, I stopped going to the parties. But you know what I do? After each party, I'd be like, man, what's going on? What, what happened at the party? Ask a whole bunch of questions. And one day the brother told me, you know what? You don't stop coming, but you're still peeking over the fence. That's what he told me. He said, man, you still peeking. I, I, I get mad. Well, why y'all invite me to the party? Why you tell me what's going on? They had enough respect, respect to know, bro, you don't belong in this environment. You're changed. Or you're trying to change. But he is saying, now, if you want to come, come on. But he told me, and that changed the way I think. It actually changed me because he said, look, bro, you, you're peeking over the fence. You ain't on the fence no more. You don't stop doing what you used to do, but you're still peeking over here. And that touched my heart and it let me know, don't even have a desire for that stuff. Hmm? David wasn't peeking. David, was, David had went all the way in. Hmm? The king of Israel locked in with the enemy, but now he don't find himself in a situation where they want him to go kill Israel. Before, he was telling the guy that he was going to kill Israel, but he wasn't doing it. 
He was being a little deceitful there. But the enemy don't play fair. The enemy going to let you think you coming on in. You're just going to do this a little bit. You're going to do this, get away with it. And then it's going to be time to pay up. He's going to tell you to jump all in. And if your heart and mind ain't right, you're going to jump all in. And find yourself somewhere crying, sad, wanting hands laid on you because you, you, you don't find yourself, you, you, don't, you don't went off. You don't done something you shouldn't have done that you regret. Let's read. Let's get it. We're going to see it, too. We're going to see it. All this going to come for a circle. Let's read it. Where well, I stopped off at? Uh, eight, verse eight. And David said unto a keech, but what? Nah, I read that. Uh, I'm at verse 10. Wherefore, rise up early in the morning with the master servants that are come with thee, as soon as ye be up early in the morning, have light and depart. So David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Okay? So he didn't go to battle with them. He did not go to battle with them. Y'all gave him a way to escape. Even though he didn't understand what was going on, he gave, he, y'all gonna always give us a way to escape. And when he give you that way to escape, you about to take it. But let's read Samuel, 1 Samuel 30. Hmm? Let's go to 1 Samuel 30. It says, and all of this happened because of a fear and a rejection caused him to run over to the to hide among the Philistines. When 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 Saul had said, "Look, I've sinned. You straight. You you can stay here. Come home, huh? Come home. You you gonna you gonna be both. Uh uh uh. uh you gonna prevail and, and, and basically tell him you gonna be the king. I know I know your your position. But but David didn't see God at this point. Huh? He went on his own understanding. First Samuel 30. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to uh, Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites and, that had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitted Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any either great, they slew not any either great nor small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no power to weep. Okay? And David and, and David, two wives were taken captive, Anah, the, Jez uh, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelite, and David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of the stone in him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the in the Lord his God. Okay, that's all I'm read for that. Look, so even look, if David would have been in position, what that stuff would have happened? Hmm? He was out of position. But nevertheless, you understand what I'm saying? He felt the stress. He was down. But the point, one thing I want us to get out of this part is David had to encourage himself in the Lord. Huh? He had to go within himself. So even when we do fall, right, and you find yourself in that situation where, you know, hey, I, I was out of order. Hmm? You have to go within what, what the spirit is huh? and, 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 and encourage yourself. You know, repent, ask them for forgiveness, you know, but but don't don't get to the point where you just give up. Hmm? Don't give to the point where you, that you just give up. But remember how you got in that situation. Remember how you got in that situation. So let's go to. Um, I want to go to let's go to John eight. Let's go to John. Eight. Let's get with the king. Let's get with the king. John 8. You know what? Before we go to John 8, let's go to Isaiah 53. Go to Isaiah 53 first. 
but we skip all the way down. So, so we see David, right? David, because of the situations he had in his life and what was going on, huh? And this all look and thank the Almighty God. This is before he, you know, before his encounter with Bathsheba and all this type of stuff. After that, David did get to a point where that brother started walking that thing out. You don't see no more peeping. You don't see no more. Uh, stumbling and falling. You don't see him dealing with the enemy. You see David walking upright. Okay? But but we, I, the thing about the Bible that I love is it shows the good, the bad, the ugly. It shows everything. You don't hide anything. Because all of our lives is like, not like that, but all of our lives, some of us have been good, bad, and ugly. But we get to a point where we get broken, where we can understand that, you know what, I got to get it right. You see what I'm saying? Then we, we start walking, living, holy and righteous. But you can't just act like you've been living holy and righteous your whole time. You understand what I'm saying? This is where humility come in at. This is where we can teach the younger people that's come behind us. Look, I don't been where you at. I don't done it. And this is the wisdom. But I also tell them, look, this is, this is what has happened to me when I was in my transgression. This is why my kids act like this. But some of us don't even think like that. I think the kids is crazy. Now them kids, them grandkids acting like this because of trauma that's being passed down. But thank the Almighty y'all, he still have us in positions, right, where we can still, uh, hallelujah, uh, pray and ask for covering for our family members. Hmm? Some people, look, it's some people that it may not be your kids, right? It could be your brother. It could be your sister. That looked at you, you don't know they look at you as they see your life, you walk and hold it right. They, they know you that you're trying, and then you get around them, or they hear something about you stumbling and falling, so now this damaged them. Huh? Or if you the one that's, that's you, you supposed to be righteous, you know, uh, and y'all, and then you rejecting them because of what they got going on. I'm, I'm not saying yoke up with no devil, no, I ain't saying no yoke up with no evil, but I'm saying you rejecting them with not showing them love. Uh, 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 peace, gentle, not being gentle with them, not showing the fruit of the spirit based off what they have done to you in your past. Now you're calling that pain on them. Don't, don't get it twisted. I ain't saying you got a wicked brother and a wicked sister. We should just go play, we should play spades. I ain't saying all that. What I'm saying is you still got to show them love and, and, and be that beacon of light. And if you want to play spades, you can play spades, but don't get tangled in sin. Let me say that. I want to be clear. You know how Israel is. Yeah. Take words and twist it. Go ahead. Somebody lit up. Who lit up? I think Iman. It's me again. Iman, okay, go ahead. Um, I go was ahead. just going to say, not only, not only does it affect um, our family member, the choices that we make, but it, it affects Israel as a whole. Because this thing between Saul and David was the beginning of the splitting of the two kingdoms. That's when Israel split because of the, the bad blood between both camps and so yeah. you know when we we tend to think that what we do only affects us and to a lesser extent our family but because of the type of um because of yah's calling on us as a nation everything that we do affect everyone else within the nation hallelujah and we got it and, and look to a point it's the whole world the whole world is actually because of us being disobedient because of us rejecting the word So we, we got to get this thing. We, we have to get we, we, we submit ourselves to the Almighty, huh? Uh, Isaiah fifty three. Isaiah fifty three. We just we just got to be honest with with ourselves. That's all. Just be honest with ourselves when we look in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? Let it be real with yourself. But uh, Isaiah fifty three. Who has believed our report? And whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? But he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. And he have no form of commonness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire of him, desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. Remember this. He is despised and rejected of men and man of sorrows, acquainted with grief and hid. And, and as we, ah, hallelujah, strong boy. And as we hid, as it was our faces from him, he was despised, <clears throat> and, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has bore our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him, not esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 
and he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, he, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb of slaughter, as a sheep before his shear is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And he was, and, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cast out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had no, done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The reason why I read that, because this is a, 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 a picture of the Messiah. We're going to read parts of it in a minute. Being rejected. He going to get judged. We're going to see him get accused. Huh? And we're gonna get, we're gonna see them get put to death. Okay. And I want us to understand when we walk in this walk, rejection can cause all these things. Huh? You're gonna be rejected. And also because of your light, right? People can accuse you, set you up, huh? Try to accuse you so they can reject you. People accuse you just so they can reject you, right? We're gonna see it. Uh, they're going to bring judgment against you like they've done a Messiah all the way to death, all because they don't want to reject that word. Let's go to John 8. We're going to touch a little bit of it. John 8. And I just read that so we know don't, don't, don't feel bad because you get rejected. Because hmm? he was rejected <clears throat> by people who seem holy too. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's check out Yahshua, man. Um, <clears throat> I just want to look at this setup, how they tried to set him up. We're going to jump. Uh, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him and sat down and talked, and, and he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought him, brought him to him a woman taken into adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says thou? This say they tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger and rolled on the ground as he, as he heard of them. I read this scripture right here, Zion, because I wanted to understand. Hallelujah. Look, even when somebody try to tempt you, right, and set you up just so they can reject you in the end, you still have to keep, you got to stand in spirit and only say what the spirit tells you to say, right? Because situations like this are going to happen. You're going to have people try to put you in situations just so they can uh, 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 accuse you of something, huh? And you may just be innocent, maybe trying to help, whatever, but some people are trying to set traps. Hmm? I want us to remember that. This is all a part of this rejection, all a part of this journey to dedication. We're going to have to deal with stuff like this because they want to dirty their name, not your name, the name of the Almighty. Hmm? Let's go to Matthew 26. So you're going to have to deal with people accusing you and setting you up. Don't forget that. That's why you got to uh, be, be slow to speak, quick, what do you say, uh, uh, slow, to, slow to speak, quick to hear it. Because they were setting him up, trying to, trying to get him to break the law. Matthew 26. <clears throat> we're going to start this off in verse 56. Just bringing the Messiah into this now. We dealt with Saul, uh, uh, David. Just deal with the Messiah because he's going to show us how to deal with this rejection. Hmm? He's not going to get bitter. He's not going to run. He's not going to be in fear. Hmm? He ain't going to do those two things that the patriarchs done. This the king. 
Matthew 26, 56. It says, ooh, yeah, we're going to start. Let me, hold on, hold on, Zion. I might want to go up. I might want to go up. I'm going to start at verse 50. I'm going to start at 50. Matthew 26, verse 50. I'm going to read down. Yeah. Whew. All right, let's get it. And Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? They came, then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And Jesus, and behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and, and stuck and, and stuck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then Jesus then, G, then said Jesus unto him, put up again thy sword into this place, for all that they take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father, and he will presently give me more than twelve leaves of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? Okay? So let me say this. Let me finish reading. It's going to answer itself. In the same hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Are ye come out against a thief with swords and staffs for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Okay. I, I wanted to start at 56, but I read down. But look, the Messiah understood that this stuff was happening to him because of prophecy, okay? Because the things had to be fulfilled in the scriptures. In other words, he understood that he had to endure these things in order to please the Father. So I, I want us to understand before I keep, keep reading is that a lot of things that happen in our life, a lot of rejection, a lot of the mocking, a lot of the people coming against you, it's because y'all wants to get the glory out of your life. He wants to shine through you. So don't look at it as, yo, they coming, they, they, they coming at me, they, they coming against me. The scripture told us they ain't coming against you, they coming against him, right? Our job is to understand to endure so we can glorify him. But it'll help us a little bit, it'll give us a little bit more strength when we understand that we're doing this for him. This is gonna sound cliche, but don't even take it personal. You think Stephen took it personal when they were stoning him? He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Hmm? A lot of things that's going on in our life, he know the bigger picture. It's a plan, and we just a part, we just a little puzzle, a part of this big plan, and he's going to use each one of us to get some glory out of our life so he can uh, draw all men to him. But he'll use us to continue to get rejected, to be mocked, to be ridiculed, right? And we keep showing the love of Abba, and you never know who that's going to bring. It may not even bring the person that's doing the persecuting, but it can bring the people that's looking and how you endure the persecution. I just want us to keep this in mind. The Messiah understood, look, man, this is this is all about Abba. This is so that the scriptures can be fulfilled that my father won't be found out to be a liar. So I got to endure this. You can look at some of us can look back at our life. You don't been rejected. Stuff don't happen to you. Done been done wrong. Whatever the situation is. Now that you're older, you can look back and say, wow, I see why that happened. That had to happen so I can get here. Now, because that happened, I'm stronger. I got this understanding and I see if this one happened in my life. I want to be able to deal with the situation or I won't be put in this position. But at the time, it didn't feel good. You didn't have no understanding of it. But it was for, he understood the, the, the big picture. He understood 10, 15 years later, this is why you had to deal with that situation. You had to go through that because 20 years from now, I'm going to have you around some people uh, or even a situation you're going through yourself that you can look back on, on your past and say, okay, I see why that had to happen. Hmm? We got to continue to praise them at all costs. Okay. Let's keep going. Let's keep reading. And I'm at 57. And they that had laid hold on Jesus laid him away to Capus, the high priest, 
where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off, afar off until the high priest's palace and went and sat with the servants to see the end. So sometimes we, most of the time, when you go through persecution, Zion, some of your friends, maybe your family members, they're going to step back. They don't want no part of that, that, that persecution. They don't want no part of that chastising. Huh? Peter, Peter, Peter biked off. But he kept his eyes on him, though. We'll give him a Peter, Peter that credit. He kept his eyes on him. Let's finish. Now the chief priests and the elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. Hmm? With his false witness. But found none, yea, through many false witnesses came, yet found they not found they none. At the last came two false witnesses and, and said, This fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou nothing. What what is it which these witnesses against thee? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest went his clothes, saying, He have spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What think ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. Then they spit, then they spit in his face, and they buffeted him, and others smote him with the palm of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? Hmm? Boy, now Peter sat without in the place, and Desmo and the Desmo came unto him, saying, Thou was with Jesus of Galilee, but he denied, but he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou says. And when he was going out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were that were there, This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, and I do not know the man. And after and after a while came unto him that stood by and said to Peter, Surely. Thou also one of them, for thou, for they speech be, be well of thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the crow crow, the cock crow. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which, which said unto him, Before the crock crow, thou shalt deny me twice. And he went out and wept bitterly. The reason why I read all that. Is uh, what I want us to understand is that um, in your moment, sometimes in our moment of being rejected hmm, by men, some people that's not strong in the faith, they're going to get away from you. The same ones they were saying they was there, they're going to ride with you, this and that or the other. We got your bike or whatever, right? They're going to get away. Hmm? And it's because of where they at. They don't mean no harm. They love you. It's just where they at. They ain't, they ain't ready to die for this thing yet. You understand what I'm saying? So they're going to get away. But we can't get bitterness and anger in our heart because we see some people pull back. We got to understand this walk that we're walking is for us. It's for you to glorify him. So sometimes he put us in a situation that you got to endure some things. That everybody going to be able to come along with you. Hmm? Even if even, you, you could be mocked. We read this. We just read it. Be mocked, talked about. People turn their back on you, but you got to know this is for me to glorify the king. Huh? This is for me to glorify him. It ain't about everybody just sticking with me. Sometimes you have to walk this thing so low, but you ain't alone. Who with you? <laughs> the, the almighty is in you. We read last week, it say, if you do his will, if you walk in love, it say, I will, what do you say? I will. Me and the father will, will make a bold in you. He, he, both of them will come stay live in you. So you never alone. But don't get discouraged when these things happen because on this journey, it's going to happen. 
It's going to happen. Let's go to Luke uh, 23. Luke 23. I should read. Um, we'll just read two verses. But I just want to. We'll just go to Luke 23, 35. Because I wanted to see some here. Because you're going to have people. When, when, when you've been saying, hey, I'm walking the Lord. I'm doing this right. I don't want us to get caught up in this. I don't see plenty of people get caught up in this situation. Not plenty, but a couple. Because people will try you. Luke 23, 35 to 37. I should have just said it, but we'll write it. We'll read it. And the people stood before. Yeah. I'm going to 23. 30, 30, Luke 23, 35 through 37. 37 was I want, what I want, but I'm going to read from 35. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derived him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Right? The, the reason why this scripture is important and what we're dealing with, because it, it may come a time when you're on your journey that, that people try to entice you to prove who you serve by getting you to do strange things, right? Saying, okay, I see you do this, I see you doing this, but do this for yourself. In other words, don't you try to make a prove nothing to nobody. Only thing, only, only person we have to please is, is, is the father. Huh? We don't have to do anything to, 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 to prove not to nobody. But people, you have been in a little situation, you have people try to get you to prove the power of the Almighty, or get you to prove that you're walking with Him. Now, we don't have to prove nothing to nobody. I want us to keep that in our heart. Only thing we have to do is, is submit ourselves to Yahshua and walk holy and righteous, kill this flesh. Hmm? That's what we got to kill this flesh. We, we're not into proving nothing to nobody. Because when you get in that mindset of proving things to other people, that's when if you can't do it, now you're going to feel like, oh, I couldn't do that. You'll, you'll feel down. Because the most high ain't going to give you no power to prove something uh, for nobody but him. But I wanted to see how they were trying to mock him and they were trying to get him to, look, you don't save all these other people. You don't heal all these other people. Now you can't even deliver yourself. Because people will see you in a situation and don't understand that you're in a situation for the glory of Yah. And they'll be like, well, I, look, I'm not talking about walking in sin either. I'm talking about you just may be, let's say you get in a little financial situation. Or let's say uh, um, you, you somebody may get uh, ill, a sickness or whatever the situation is. You, you may find yourself in a, in a little situation for the glory of Yah, but people uh, uh, try to ridicule you based off that. Like how you was preaching a word, prophesying and doing all this stuff, and now you're in a situation. You can't even help yourself. They don't understand, man. It's for the glory of Yah. So you you don't, I don't want us to get in our mind that, oh, I got to get myself out of this situation like this. No, you be still and see the salvation of Abba. Hmm? Let's go to this story. I think Monica alluded to this, and it came to me when she said it. I sent out a text this week, but she alluded to it earlier. I'm going to read it. John, John 11. John 11, um, boy, it's so much. We're going we gonna to deal with this a little bit more, y'all will, next week. But I want to touch it now because I think it was the Koti Monica that kind of touched just a little bit. And, and Ima, I think one of them said that. Uh, let's, let's, let's start it. I mean, Johnny, no, is it, is it John 11? John 11? Oh, yeah, John 11. This phone. I'm in Luke 11. I'm like, why is this phone doing that? John 11, and I'm going to start at verse 48. Oh, man. Check it out. Okay. Y'all don't stone me. Don't stone me. Don't stone me. <clears throat> I'm going to start at 45. Then many of the Jews, which came to Mary and had seen, I met John 11, verse 48. 
I just thought about out on something. But uh, let me let me read it. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and said and seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees the council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and and the nation. Okay. So they saying, look, if we leave this man alone and let him live his life, guess what? He going to be waking so many people up, healing so many people that they going to believe on him. So look, we can correlate to, to, to us because he's in us. If we just let Yahshua do the work through us and let him live through us and we die to our flesh, man, that power, hmm? The, the, the power will come to us and we'll start doing some healing. We'll start doing some delivering, right? We'll, we'll start walking in the power of the Almighty on this earth. Hmm? But don't feel strange when people come against you, right? It's because they, 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 they're they afraid, like right here, these brothers got afraid because they understood they would lose their position. So they trying to reject the Messiah and kill him based off the little position they, they think they hold it. So, yeah, people will come against you huh, and try to destroy you because they think you're trying to come in their position. That's that insecurity thing again. Hmm? But don't find that strange. Right. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest, that same year said unto to them, know ye nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest this year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation. And, and, for, and not for that nation only, but also he should gather them into one, gather in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. Now, <laughs> then, then, from, then from that day forth, they took counsel together to put him to death. Um, I touched this week. And I just said, we, we're in the scripture. Understand this high priest, when he's speaking this, he's not speaking this of his own. It said he spoke this not of himself, meaning the Ruach was speaking through him. Okay? He was being used to speak the word, but he wasn't one with him. So we don't want to get in a situation like that donkey was where we just getting used. We want to be a workman with him. Huh? We want to be a workman with the Almighty. The high priest was being used at this time. He didn't even understand what he was saying. He didn't have no understanding because he wasn't speaking of, of himself. So this, this can be a little touchy because guess what? If your heart ain't right, if Yah has called you to the earth to do something, you're going to get it done. But the key is where your heart is in it because you could be doing something. Because cause look, when Saul went off, did he stay king? Y'all didn't take him out of that position. He stayed king. He still stayed in position, but he was not going to get the reward or the benefits of working with Yah because of his heart. So, yeah, you, you, we, we can get put in a position, preaching, teaching, healing, singing, dancing, prophesying, praying, whatever, whatever anointing he put on us. But if our heart ain't right, He's still going to get the work done through you, but you yourself will not get the reward of the work that you're putting in. Because at the end of the day, you know who work it is? It's his work. We got to, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 said, we got to become a workman with him. And you know what that is? Us getting out the way, getting our own understanding, our own mindset, our own flesh, get out the way and just be a vessel and let him, let him work through us. But the high priests and, the, and, the, and these rulers, they didn't want to get out the way because they had a little position among uh, 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 Israel. We're going to close it out with Ephesians uh, 1. Let's close it out with Ephesians 1, 6. 1 through 6. See, they go to show sometimes 
the most high be speaking through you, you don't even know it's him speaking through you. You know, I was telling the brother, I think it was Jay, telling him it's like uh you, we have had these situations where y'all speak to you and then somebody tell you, yo, you don't even know what you're saying. You that just happened. You, you giving me a word, I need to hear this word. But you had no understanding of what you were saying was dealing with this person at this time. It was prophecy coming through you. When y'all y'all love his people, so he gonna use whatever he got to use to get the work done. He, I think it was Messiah. One of them said, it, 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 he said, let the rocks crowd. You know, if you don't want to pray, he say the rocks and crowd. So we gotta humble ourselves and get out the way, and not think that we're so. Uh, how can I put it? He desire to use us. He desire our fellowship. But don't get in the mindset to think that he got to use you. Ephesians 1, we're going to read 1 through 6, and we're going to get out of the way. Y'all will. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from our God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasures of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. Look, he has made us accepted in the beloved, in the Messiah. Hmm? He, he don't reject us. He will accept us if we continue in his will and keep the faith. Huh? It, it's, we, some of the stuff I want to say now, but we're going to, um, y'all, we're going to hold off next week, y'all will. But just understand, all we have to do is submit ourselves to Yahshua. Have faith in him. Believe in him. Be obedient to his word. Keep his law, statute, and commandments. Huh? Walk in love. Kill this flesh. And he is, is he going to do it. You will be accepted. He told and you won't be rejected. Look, he told he, what the brother named uh, uh, Cain. Then he tell Cain, he said, if you do what he said, if you do good, you, 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 you will be accepted. Did he tell Cain that? Just do good and you will be accepted. We don't get rejected when we reject this word, when we forsake him. But on this journey to dedication, Zion, we are going to be rejected by the world. You are going to be rejected by people who don't understand, who not in y'all's will. But don't let that cause you to, to, to get bitter, get angry, uh, walk in sin. We got to do what the Messiah done, how he handled rejection. How did, how did the Messiah handle rejected? rejection? He handled it with love. He handled it with joy. He handled it with peace. He did not allow people rejecting him, mocking him, ridiculing him. Stop him from pleasing the almighty Yah. Rejection is a thing that we have to, you know, if you ain't never dealt with it, ask y'all to show you in your heart where you rejected that and you uh, where you was rejected at in your in your childhood, or in, or even when you got older, whatever the situation is, if if, if that rejection has led to be bitterness or, or or pain or any type of uh, hurt, you got to ask y'all to clean it out because you can't you can't always expect people to come to you to say, oh, I'm sorry for whatever. You understand what I'm saying? First of all, it, it's him that's got to do the healing. He got to do the healing in us. 
Hmm? So we got a crowd of Abba Yah and Axim to heal my heart from any pain or anything that's causing me to act contrary to your word. Don't, don't allow rejection to cause you to act contrary to his word. Because sometimes we don't forget when we rejected, how we was rejected, but it's affecting us to this day. So I would admonish us to pray, ask the Almighty Yah to search our heart and to show us uh, where those hurts and pains at, where we felt that we uh, wouldn't uh, receive that, mm -hmm. that called us pain, that we can ask him to clean us and uh, allow the comforters just to hold us uh, and console us so we can walk this thing out in love and truth and power and boldness. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All praise to the king. That's all I got at this hour. Uh, let's do this uh, Hebrew roll call, Zion. Um, hallelujah. Thank you for your time. Let's see who we got online today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's let's get uh, Cote Monica in here. What would you like to add or anything you'd like to say before we get out of here, Cote? That's a long fam. Um... I actually don't have a lot. I think I said everything I needed to say. Very good lesson. Um, just stay encouraged, y'all. And love you. Hallelujah. All praise for the clean. Got, got, got to have you on, sis. Um, hallelujah. Let's go with uh, Mother Barbara J. Johnson. I well, always say her name like a disco jockey. Mother Barbara J. Johnson. Hallelujah. Okay. All praise for the king. Love you. Let, let's get uh we got the Walker family on. Good like word. Good word. Um, I don't got anything. Hallelujah. Glad to have you on. He brewed. Hallelujah. Let's go to uh Uncle Willie, our Dean. Barcelona, everybody. Happy Sabbath day. Uh it was a real good lesson. It was really like Touch me in so many different ways, it's really hard to explain it. Seems like, uh, you know, most of it was like my life, like I lived that same life. David and Moses and uh, experienced the same stuff they have experienced. Even to the point two weeks ago, God told me I was a king. I said, a king, Father? He said, yes, you're a king. But uh, just endure uh, the pain and suffering and give God the glory because God has a plan, God has an eternal plan for us. And just walk in, and I also learned where well, God taught me. God taught me that, uh, you know, being a servant, being a servant can bring so much joy to I never knew it. I just, I just learned it recently. It's it, it actually, it's the joy of my life. Just, just being a servant of other people. Love you. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Love you too. Thank you. All praise to the king. Let's go. We got uh, Brother Mike online. Hallelujah. Elder Mike Rima, what you got? Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Shabbat family. Shalom family. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. I'm going to tell you, it's funny how words go around. And the reason I can say that, how can you call his name and still be angry at the same time? <laughs> and I say that, no, because I literally, I logged in this morning listening to the program. And I, we were literally forced off the road, took a ride down through the ditches, a uh, oh, good football field, if not a little bit long. We came through the trees, back on the road, angry, upset. All I could do was just think about catching this man if my truck would go fast enough. And at the same time I'm doing that, I'm sitting here, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us through that. And and that's why when I'm listening to, because I didn't get to hear the whole sermon today. I did not. But the beginning was good, and the end was just that much better, because I'm sitting here listening to the conflict within one's heart and with one's body and soul. Yeah, I'm angry. But am I more thankful that we was able to come out, come out of it free, nobody hurt, truck not damaged? You know, so how do you look at that? I have to look at the goodness and think of the blessing that was just bestowed upon us. 
supposed to cook better for a whole lot work. You know, but at the same Hallelujah. time, I was I'm filled with anger, and 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 I really wanted to catch him if I could. But at the, you know, and I'm going down. You know what, Lord? Thank you, thank you for bringing me through that. Thank you for bringing me through that. But the anger is still there. You know, the frustration is still that that it, that it even happened. You know, and that's the part that man has to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Even though you say thank you, Lord, do you really mean it? You know, when you say thank you, Lord, you know, no. that's when you really got to go up in here and search your heart. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, the funniest thing about it, family, my wife sitting in the truck with me, and you know, she ain't mom one word yet. <laughs> she, you know, and, and, and I'm up here bouncing around in this seat, like, but I'm, but I'm steady saying thank you. And she just as calm as can be. Just as calm as can be. Family, that's all I got today. I just, just. I'm just blessed to be here. We made it through it. And thank you, fam. And I'll re listen to the broadcast. That way I can actually go back and get the whole sermon today. Oh, praise the clean. We're glad you're on. We're glad that you're safe. We we blessed Almighty. Hallelujah. For keeping his yes, hands on. Man, thank you. That's thank a blessing you. Blessing yourself. Wow. Thank you, family. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's get Iman here. Emo, would you like to say anything? Hallelujah. I really don't have a lot to say. Um, good word, good yeah. study. Um, I will be studying up on that a little bit more. I did have um, just a little observation, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, about David. Uh, when it comes to him um, going into the enemy's territory in order to escape Saul because his word was Saul is not going to stop pursuing me. So he made a decision to go into the enemy's territory to be safe or to get out of harm's way. Um, and so a lot of, I, I look at that as him being strategic in the way that he did what he did because he could have at some point ended up having to have a battle with Saul that he didn't want to have. And so his, his, his mindset is, let me just move out of the way for the moment. He may have, he, he may have done it the wrong way and, and, and agreed he did do it the wrong way because he did not consult the Most High in what he was doing um, when it came to um, him going into the Philistines' territory. But he was wise enough to take out some of our own enemies and hide it so that the enemy, so that, that Akish did not know and that he would trust him and not come against him and his men. But he would have gone into battle and still been in, I believe, and that, you know, I don't, we don't know the outcome of that. If he'd have gone into battle, I still believe that he would have been on our side, on, on, on Israel's side, only because he already had proven that that's what he was all about. He was just trying to stay out of harm's way or stay out of Saul's way so that he did not have to come against the Most High's anointed. Um, so that's how I saw that. I could be wrong, and I'm sure you'll correct me on that. Um, but that's all I have. So thank you. <laughs> the, the scripture that comes to my mind is this right here. Any man that sake deceive his life shall lose it. You know what I mean? If, 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 so if he, if David is doing it to save his own life, he's already off. When we seek to save our life and we ain't consulted the most high, what's going to happen is it's going to lead to deception. It'll lead to lying. But we do still see that David still was used to clean out those enemies that Saul didn't clean out. You see what I'm saying? He still, that's why I quoted that scripture. I think it is Exodus 23. When we were supposed to go in the land and kill all them uh, Canaanites, the Ephraimites. I think. Don't quote me on that. But when Saul had opportunity to do it, he didn't do it. So now David is being used to do it. But now when we come to that scripture we just read in John 11 by the high priest, he was prophesied and he didn't even know what he was doing. So yeah, David did kill those enemies. He did do that work. He did put that work in. And like you said, which I totally agree with, we don't, I don't know if David would have switched sides when he got over there and started fighting or not. I don't know. Uh, but he was living a lie. You see what I'm saying? At, at, at that point when he was living with the uh, Philistines, uh, the king of Cush, David was living a lie. 
So when I look at the scripture, it's like, can you live a lie and still fully uh, 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 please the most high? Can we be living a lie and living a deceit for whatever the case is and still be fully pleasing to him? So what came to my mind is the scripture says, if a man seek to save his life, he shall lose it. So I, I would just say like, man, and I'm glad you brought it up because again, it goes by the rejection. Sometimes we don't walk in love or do things that we supposed to do because we already been rejected. So now we don't want to feel that pain anymore. So now we'll be deceitful or we'll do something the way we think to appease the situation. You see what I'm saying? We'll, and instead of doing what does say y'all, whether to walk in love, be gentle, or still say kind words, whatever, we'll come up with our own way to do it. And guess what? The other person might not even know because they may be appeased, but still it's not uh, pleasing to the most high, but the work still getting done. Like you still got this fake little sort of piece in the house. It could be in the household, the, 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 the church, whatever, but you, 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 the persons are still not doing what Yah has told them to do, but they have found a way to, to do something to appease the situation. So they can still, they can have like best of both worlds. They still didn't submit themselves and they still didn't get to put putting themselves in a situation where they got rejected. You see what I'm saying? It all, all comes down to you trying to save your own life with that situation with David. But again, that pain, it, it, that, that pain, that rejection, because like I said, you go back and read 1 Samuel 24, you will see, I, I'm going to say for me, I can see how Man, this dude been lying to me. This dude don't told me he don't cry saying he ain't gonna kill me. And then next thing I know, he tried to kill me again. So I can see David when he get to uh first Samuel 26, like, bro, you don't say this before. Now I ain't for the trust you, you know what I mean? But still, y'all, uh 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 y'all is not about us. We gotta check with him. We don't live in fear. So even if you lose your life, even if it is conflict, that's what we gotta go through for the standard of truth. If you got to walk in love and tell the truth and it's going to be conflict, it's going to be war, so be it. You know what I mean? Because that's, man, I don't want to go off of something else. Because that's why a lot of households get destroyed in the end because it's a false sense of peace. It's a false sense of uh, love. It's a false sense of we getting along, even in the church. You know what I mean? It's, it's people jumping around, singing together and dancing, but they really don't like each other. But it's like, well, I ain't going to say that just so we can keep peace. No, we got to bring that stuff to the forefront so we can really walk in a, 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 a spirit and truth. But I get David, though, because that's the tough situation. Because Saul was, he literally had uh, tried, to, was tried to kill that brother. <laughs> but, man, it's just, that's a tough one. But nah. It, um, so I, I want to say that um, you were wrong in, 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 the, in the thinking, but the scripture that comes to my mind is I see that David was trying to, he used wisdom on how to save his own life. And I know we, we shouldn't use wisdom on how to save our own life. Hey, we got to put our, put our life in his hand. If we die, we die. If it causes conflict, it causes conflict, but I'm going to trust in y'all to the end. But that being said, that's David, man. That's a whole nother. That's that's a tough one, boy, with David and Saul. Cause me personally, I don't like to be around people that's crazy and talk all crazy. I get away from it. True. And the first thing you're gonna do is you gotta get out the way. And so he was like, "Let me get out the way," cause at some point in time, Saul gonna take my life. <laughs> so let me move. And so that's that's what he did. I'm just saying that's how. Yeah. I saw. I thought it was a strategic move that he made. Um, when you look at Abraham and you look at uh, Isaac, you see that they, you know, it, out of fear, they did some things that they shouldn't have done either. That wasn't the Most High. What wasn't something that the Most High told them to do, but because of who they were, or because of who He was in them, He protected them. He, he you know, and He delivered them out of their situations. Um, but, but mm -hmm. yeah, I. Thing. you know that was he, tr he tried to save his own life but he did it he, he did do some good out of trying to save his own life i get what you're saying though i, I just called it you know i just called he's not gonna yeah. make up a vision for sin right so check this out even and this is what i think i said a little bit earlier the look think about what ended up happening the people a lot of people end up getting killed and get taken away when you look at the rest of that story when david's situation because he wasn't in place 
because he was on that side. It, it could be possible if David would have, because David, David had never really lost a battle. You know what I mean? The Most High was with him. So even with the when you when you say Abraham, that's when I called it. When them brothers would move in fear and do things out of fear, we always see the the um the consequences of what happened, like with their kids. Uh, think about man, uh, what the, if she said Abraham, Abraham with the brother uh, Isaac and um, Ishmael. He moved out of fear, listening to his wife. Man, forget what you talking about. Y'all say to chill. I'm gonna have a. We're gonna do this, but because of fear with that situation, he brought on a. He brought on uh, Ishmael, even when he went to Egypt. So it's 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 gonna become. It got to come to us where we say, look, I'm gonna give it all up, even if it cost me my life. It cost me my life. You see what I'm saying? I'm not moving in fear. I'm not even leaning on my own understanding to to try to fix the situation. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, because it's going to be destruction. It's going to be destruction in the end. <clears throat> to add to that, man, I, I mean to interrupt, but um, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. What you're bringing out is beautiful because if we look at those those situations, when the Most High declares something, He declares it. Like if He tells David, "You're going to be king," you're going to be king. Like it is, it is what it is. Once He was anointed as king and He had been chosen. David then had to learn how to walk in faith according to that word. And sometimes we can miss up just like Abraham did, just like Jacob did, just like many of our, our patriarchs um, did um, before David. And so he had to be he had to be established in that word that, man, you're going to be king. If he goes back and Saul tries to kill him again, you don't know how the most high is going to move. But because in that moment, he didn't even want to take that chance. He was like, man, let me just let me just uh, uh, lean on my own understanding to get out of this situation. And then through that, the Most High is still going to get the glory, but we never can uh, uh, we never can discount His grace and His mercy in a situation where we do the opposite or we lean on our own understanding. What He allowed David to do, He was still moving with him to to so that His words can come forth. But that doesn't mean that David's actions were completely in line with the Most High, because He brought him back full circle. You got to understand, once David was anointed as king, all those nations that he conquered. And, and all the the <clears throat> all the wars that he fought with the Philistines was going to happen anyway. <laughs> the Most High was going to use him anyway to do that exact same work. Uh, and so uh, I just don't ever want us to get it confused that His grace and His mercy is always abounding even more than our transgression. And so He will still move uh, with us in a certain situation, but uh, we have to come to the understanding that man, when he, when His word comes forth and He said that this thing is going to be done, it's going to be done. No matter what, it don't matter what the what the what it looked like on the outside. Saul could have done whatever he wanted. He wasn't gonna kill David because the Most High already said you were gonna be king, <laughs> so his life wasn't gonna be taken. Um, and so he just had to walk that out. But this is a learn. This is a learn behavior as we uh, uh we walk in Hamashiach. And so I just want us to, to to keep that that mindset. Hallelujah! All praise to the King. I think a uh, coach Mitchell Lee. Go ahead. What you got? Yeah, the scripture that I that I think of um, in in regards to this topic is that Yah did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and self discipline. And um, Hallelujah. regardless of what's going on, regardless of how we feel, if Abba has told us a thing, and I know it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> it's not easy. But if Abba has told us a thing, it's it's done. Um, yes, because of who Abba is especially if he's put an anointing on your life, he is going to protect you, even if you make poor choices. But I also think about there's Yah's perfect will and his permissible will. He won't let you do something and he'll correct you, but it, it's, it's out of line with what his perfect will would have been. And um, I thought that was interesting because as you were talking about that, I, I was thinking there's a lot of a lot of scriptures about deceit in Psalms. And we know that David is credited for writing a lot of these things in the Psalms. And I don't know if this one is one of his, but in Psalms 101, it says, he that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that mm -hmm. telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. And so even if it's just a small deceit or a small a lie, you know, we know that Satan is called the father of lies. 
So we don't want to do anything that's going to align us with Hasetan. We just don't. And we know that Abba hates deceit. And so if we can, if we would just trust in him and dwell in him and and not lean on our own understanding, then Abba's never going to tell us to do something that's going to lead us into deceit. So again, choosing his perfect rather than permissible will. All oh, praise to the king. Um, let's get Brother Trent in there. Would you like to add anything, Brother Trent? Man, this is a good conversation. Shabbat Shalom, family. You can hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I really appreciate um, what you were talking about earlier um, when you said, when you were speaking about that story, you said you were in the uh, walking in your faith, but you felt like you were still kind of looking over that window, kind of trying to like be on one side and then the other, like playing both sides at the same time. Yes, sir. And like, I feel like, especially with people who don't, going this walk, I feel like before, like before you really live this life a hundred percent, live this walk a hundred percent, that's the battle that I feel like everybody has to deal with to some degree. And I also try to explain to people that like, you can also do your own kind of version of doing research on things that you want to do for yourself. Like I, I got a lot of confirmations with this walk this week, especially with what's going on, you know, in the world as a whole. But my father always told me like, how it starts is usually how it ends. And because we were the first people, you know, we got to get back on point and we not going to go there if everybody ain't on the same page. So I just really appreciate all the things that you talk about as far as just like, you know, oh, anything not done in faith is, is sin. And I, I definitely learned that anything that you do with deceit, I don't know how anybody expects to get any good and good reaction to that. You know, every bad action has a bad reaction. So I just appreciate all the good words you gave me today. I caught as much as I could. I'm dealing with Wi-Fi issues, but, you know, Shabbat Shalom family. I hope everybody has a good end to the week and a good beginning of the week coming. Hallelujah. All praise to the King. Thank you for being on my brother. Hallelujah. That had you on Trent. Let's get, uh, Let's get my little niece in here. Mariah Foster. What you got? <laughs> I don't know if she was on listening or just got it on. Good word, Uncle Rick. Hallelujah. Glad to have you on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go with our elder Nikhil Eubanks. The captain. I just like <laughs> thank you. I just like to say, uh, Shabbat Shalom to you, to everybody. Thank you for this, you know, this wonderful lesson that mm. there's so many lessons in within this lesson. And I was truly blessed on, you know, various levels. And so uh, I just thank the Most High for you. Thank you, Most High, for everyone that, that attended and those who commented, because I learned a lot from that, too, as I listened to the comments and everything. So be blessed, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Shabbat Shalom, glad to have you on. Uh, Ak O. I don't really got much, Shabbat Shalom, family. Hallelujah, glad to have you on, Hebrew. Um, Mitchell Lee, do you want to say anything else or are you good? I'm good, just Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Hallelujah, okay. Uh, let's go with more Ray Troy, we wrap it up, hallelujah. That's something. Right. Hey, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom to the family as always. Um, just an on time word as always, uh, Maury Rick. Appreciate it, man. Blessings to you and the family. I don't really have a lot to add um, as well. I would just, you know, say again to everybody, um, just as the lesson was, was you know, saying don't allow, don't allow other people to, to get you off course. You know, said so don't, don't allow um, their thoughts or what they could be thinking or, or what they what they believe that you believe or whatever. Don't allow those things to get you off course. Continue to stay in the most high. <clears throat> Continue to follow Hamashiach. And you're gonna you're gonna get the glory. He's gonna get the glory out of out of you. And he's gonna give you a, a, a glory so that people can see what it is to truly follow uh, the Messiah. A lot of people are getting let off right now just because they're trusting in their own selves. Um, they read in the word, they think they got a little bit of juice and they, they are um, succumbing to pride. And that's what we saw with Saul. You know, I so said, you got a person who was so fearful. He was so uh, uh, insecure. But then when he got a little bit of power and he, he saw he could make some decisions, not only did he allow the people to sway him, um, but 
out of out of pride, he wanted to destroy. He wanted to destroy David. You know what I'm saying? Out of pride, he wanted to he wanted to kill him because he felt like he was being esteemed over him, even though everything that they they were doing was supposed to be done um, for the Most High. So I just want us to stay just stay in that mindset, stay with the right heart, understanding that everything that you're doing is for the Most High, despite what anybody else is thinking, um, or what they may believe that you that you think or how you walk in or whatever. Just stay stay within him. Stay within him. That's all, that's all I gotta say. Good word out. Hallelujah. All praise to the king. Uh, let us pray out. Hallelujah. Abba, y'all, we thank you. Hallelujah. Again, for this time that you have blessed us with, the time that you have uh, given us to, to, to share your word. Hallelujah. To receive your word. Hallelujah. We just, we just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that you deserve for this perfect plan that you put together. And we're grateful, hallelujah, that we're a part of this plan. But, I, but not just a part of this plan, that we, we, we're becoming workmen with you. Hallelujah. That we're doing our part and uh, allow you to use us to help build your kingdom. We, we, we pray for our loved ones, hallelujah, who, who may be walking contrary to this word. But we have a hope, hallelujah, just as you brought us, you will also bring them. Uh, I, I pray for, hallelujah, for, for, for the brothers and sisters, not just with us, but around the world, that they Open, that you will open our hearts and minds to receive a word from you, hallelujah, to bring them closer to you. We thank you, Yahshua, for the work that you've done, the work you're doing, and the work you're going to do. We are forever indebted unto you, hallelujah, and we, we just give you the honor. The Lamb is worthy to be praised. Uh, we don't take it for granted that you have put, you have planted, hallelujah, your, your, your heart, your mind in us that will allow us, hallelujah, to be just like you, to be that perfect, that perfect example, that express image of who you are on the earth. We thank you and we love you. And, and Father, I ask you right now, Father, that you would put in our hearts and our minds that uh, that we make decisions that's, that's based off your word. Hallelujah. I repent for not making decisions based off your word. I, I repent for leaning on my own understanding at times, for trusting in my own self. Hallelujah. I repent for those things, y'all. Hallelujah. And I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. But I pray that you would continue to cover us. Hallelujah. Continue to bring us closer to you. Hallelujah. But we can be that light in the earth. Hallelujah. Just as your son Yeshua was. We thank you so much, Abba. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, 1 Corinthians 1.10. It reads... Now I beseech you, brother, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that y'all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. Love y'all. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, stay anchored, Zion. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.